What's good? Ah, uh, so today I'm gonna be showing you all how to make a base helmet. What's a base helmet? This is a base helmet. It's a simple rounded helmet that I designed that can be slipped onto your head very easily, uh, just like so. And it's easy to bring it out of because there's enough air in the side. And there's a great template to help you build stuff like this one, this one, and not this one because I bought this one. But there's plenty of things you can do with just this pattern right here. And I'm going to show you how I made it right now. Hope you enjoy. No, no, no! I my light. This is where the intro would be if I was smart enough to make one for myself. But I don't. Oh, by the way, I'm this guy. Yeah, hi. Okay, so before we get started, I need to show you what tools you're going to need. So first off, you're going to need a cutting mat. Uh, your cutting mat's going to look a lot nicer than this one. This one's been around for about 10 years, and I've, I've been using it. It's dirty, but I love her. Anyways, uh, next thing you're going to need, ruler. Rulers are super important. Go get yourself one that has a uh, whole metal body. Get one with inches and one with metric. It helps. So, uh, next thing, the most important tool you're going to be working with, knife. Now you can use a box cutter like I do, you can use uh, one of those sliding telescopic knives, you can try even using a X-Acto or, or, or any of those, that's completely fine. Uh, the thing that's mostly important is, is how you use the blade. So like, find something you're comfortable with. Uh, personally, I like this one because I could switch out the blades really, really quickly. Foam dulls blades quickly. So, uh, use those two sides, then you're done with it, and when you're done to, and ready to chuck it, you can go and sharpen it instead of chucking it, or you can do what I like to do, and just buy a whole bunch of them in bulk. So all you gotta do is just slide them out, and you're good to go. All right, next thing, tape. Always a good idea to have some tape. You can use it to put your patterns together. Sometimes you need to hold a piece together, and uh, you don't want to use like pins or something like else that to mess with it, so use this. Oh my goodness. Uh, next thing you're gonna use is contact cement. Contact cement's super important. Uh, no, you can pick this up in all bunch of different places. This is a glue pot. This is like 50 bucks. Completely worth it though. I love this thing. It's hefty, metal, strong, and you can get all this stuff pulled right off really easy if you need to. Uh, contact cement, it's stinky. You want to use it in a well-ventilated area. I got my window right there, so we're all good. Uh, but yeah, this stuff is super strong. I like to use DAP Weldwood contact cement. This is my favorite stuff. You can also use barge. Barge actually has a little bit better flex, but it's a little bit more susceptible to water. DAP Weldwood, DAP Weldwood is... Um, a little bit more brittle, so it'll, it'll break over time, but uh, it, it holds a little bit better against water. And I, it, what's the best way to put it? It's not going to break for a long time, and the water's not going to really do too much to it either. So you can protect it, it's all up to you. Uh, next thing you'll need is a pin board. It's just a whole bunch of pins and a little board. Just, you know, throw a whole bunch of pins in there that you know you use and put them in there. All right, so next up is the foam. A lot of people like to go out and buy this stuff, uh, the puzzle piece foam mat stuff that has this really horrible design on the back. Don't don't use these designs, especially this one right here. Like there's one where it's just like a grid and it looks pretty cool. That one that one gets passed. Don't don't use this. You actually want to shave all this stuff away if you really want to work with this stuff. Um, it's also like really thick and it's super dense, so it's actually kind of like really hard to work with. I don't like working with this stuff, so let me show you what I work with. I like to work with Silly Winks brand craft foam. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby, and I know the name is a little bit ridiculous, but this is some of the best stuff I've ever used, and let me explain why. Uh, they come in a five millimeter thickness, and it's it's made out of the same material like you can, can get those really, really thin sheets like at Walmart for five bucks a pack or something like that. Uh, it's like, imagine four or five of those sheets stacked together. It's like this. So, uh, the reason why I like Silly Winks too is, is they come in a wide range of colors, and the colors all have different consistencies. So like this one right here, it's really soft, it's really stretchy, it's really squishy, it's good stuff. I like this a lot. Now if you get the blue stuff, the blue stuff's a little bit more stiff. It, it, the way it goes is like the lighter the color, the more flexible and stretchy it'll be. The darker the color, the more dense and less stretchy it'll be, and a lot more rigid it will be. So, uh, for example, here's the black foam, and this is the most dense stuff. And I like this for things that need a little bit more structurally sound material so this is the the black stuff is a lot more dense it's a it, you can't really tell on camera but like you can really really tell once you get it in your hands so i highly recommend silly winks brand if you want to get foam uh you can pick it up at hobby lobbies or michael's i believe uh and if you can't find any of those places in your area i also recommend tnt cosplay supply go check them out go read their story it's heartbreaking but it's also beautiful and uh 
let me tell you, they're, they're really blowing up the, the cosplay scene with all this great, great foam. So uh, check out TNT Cosplay Supply if you can't get to a Hobby Lobby. All right, what's the next tool? What's the next thing that we need? There's something important, but I can't remember. Oh, you gotta go download my pattern. Let's go take care of that real quick. Also get plenty of Sharpies. You'll go through a lot, trust me. All right, so here we are in MS Paint and here is the pattern for uh, base helmet. So really quickly, you can see this is the whole base helmet right here. You can download this down in the description. The link is down in the description. I'm gonna say this one more time to so make sure everybody in the back heard it. The link to get this pattern is in the description. If you take a quick look, you can see everything on here is all you need. All you gotta do is just flip it over for the other side's parts. Everything up here is for the left side. So um, all these little black dots all surrounding all this uh, these parts right here, they're all registration marks. Okay, so that'll make more sense when I actually get into the, the, the video. But when you cut these out, the way you want to cut these out is you want to cut inside the black line. Inside the black line, if you want a smaller one. If you want a larger one, cut outside the black line. Okay? Now, down on the jaw, these black lines that are on the middle, those are actually lines that help you uh, know where to bend the foam, not necessarily cut it. You really just want to do the perimeter of all these parts. Okay? So next, I'm going to show you how do you actually print these, because uh, what you could do is you could go to a copy and print center like uh, Staples or Kinko's or an office supply store where they do printing like that. If that's the case, if you take it there, just print it at 100% scale. It should come out at about two feet, two feet wide pattern. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller, but it's going to be completely worth it because while it's going to cost a little bit more money to print it at a copy and print center, uh, you only have to do it once, and then you can save these parts and you can reuse them again multiple, multiple times if you print it on something like cardstock. All right, now let's say you don't have access to a copy and print center. You want to print it from home. Uh, you can totally use regular printer paper. You can totally use your printer, but I have to show you how to use those settings. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to go up to File in the top left corner. You're going to click File. You're going to go down to Print, and you're going to go over to Page Setup. So go ahead and click Page Setup. So usually you'll have it set to portrait, you'll have the centering and all this other stuff, and you'll have these margins. Let me show you how you change your margins first. Because uh, orientation really doesn't matter, it, it just depends what you like. I prefer, I prefer landscape, because you get, you get more print on a wider scale, it's easier to tape pages together later on. So here's, here's how you take out the margins, you find out what kind of margins your computer has, or your printer has. So you're going to hit zero, and then you're going to hit tab, zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. And you're going to hit tab over time. So all these numbers that just popped up all right here, leave those exactly as is, because what's going to happen is it's going to give you a smaller amount of, uh, it's, it's going to give you the most surface area print on the piece of paper. And this is so then you save paper and you can also line up your pieces of paper really, really well with each other before you tape them together. That's why I said you need tape, because you're going to be taping pages together when you do it this way. When you do the centering down here, make sure that the horizontal and vertical. See how I click them? That's wrong. Don't do that. Leave them unclicked. Leave them unclicked. See how it, it put the image up in the corner? It really forced it up there. Alright, so that's what you want to do. Okay? So, you want to go to adjust to 100% scale. Do not do fit to. Fit to, to 3 to by 2 pages. Nah, that's not going to work. You want to do adjust to 100% scale. This way you know for a fact you're printing this at the maximum size. It's going to come out as multiple pages. And that's completely fine. All you gotta do is just tape those pages together, leave this uh, this bigger image open so you can actually see how it's supposed to go together. It should come together very, very soon. Alright, so once you have all these parts cut out and you have all those supplies, it's time to get to work. Alright, so now I take you back to the past when I was playing Swim a lot! Wait, no, wrong show, wrong show, not even me. What am I talking about? Alright, I take you to the past where I did a live stream video of me actually building this pattern, so, uh, yeah, enjoy, and I'll be back soon. Oh my, I'm, how's the past me going to be back soon when I'm already here in the future? I don't make any sense ever! So, I'm going to show you guys some, some techniques that, uh, I like to use when I do this. So just go ahead and get around the whole outline of the piece, do it as best you can without sliding under the part. Try not to go too too far away from the part either. 
When you're cutting these apart too, you want to stay on the inside of the line. You know, you don't want to do it on the outside in order so you got to get some warpage. You can do it on the outside of the line, but be wary. Uh, it's going to make the helmet a little bit larger. So, let's go ahead and get all these down real quick. Okay, cool. So I got all my lines down real quick. So now I'm going to do my registration marks. All you got to do is just do it on the outside. You're going to pull off this part in a minute with all the pins. You can put the pins back in to connect two parts back together for when you uh, cut it apart. And uh, you're going to go back and do these lines all over again because you're not going to get them to go under the, uh, the pattern in some areas. It's just easier just to do them on the outside of the line. Okay, cool. So this is the uh, left side of the side of the helmet. So I'm going to mark this. Oh, when, when you're putting your pins back in, try to put them right back in where you got them when you pulled out the pattern because uh, sometimes a pin going into the foam will do just enough damage where you're going to have to use some quick seal to fill the hole. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using quick seal fixing it up, it's just I like to do these as cleanly as possible if I can so I don't have to use as much quick seal because I like quick seal but yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Let me be honest, just a pain in the butt. Alright, so I know that the blue is going to be left, but just for the sake of uh, showing you all what you should be doing on your tutorial, mark it what side it should be. And this is going to be the front, so I know I'm going to put the front there. And this is the back, so I'm going to put a B back here. This is the top, so I'm going to put a T up here. Alright, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take all those little tick marks and I'm going to draw those all down again. Try to do these as cleanly as you can, too. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but like... You just really want to have a, a, a decent idea of where these marks are supposed to meet because these have to line up with another piece of foam that have these exact same marks on the other side so they line up just right. So we're also going to put side on this so we know that's the side. So there's our left side. All done. Really easy. We went from this to that in like two minutes. Uh, usually we'd use the ruler on this. I'm just going to go ahead and do my best to just go and do a straight up and down cut. Like I said, try not to be too much one way or another way, try to keep it as level and even as possible. You aren't needing to do a full angle cut, just do it enough. There, that's good. I'm going to do another pass because I don't think I got through the foam all the way there on the bottom part. And that's okay, just make sure you try to keep it as evenly level with the top part as you can. Use the top part like a guide if you need to. You're going to want to keep the pins in, and I'll show you why you're going to want to keep the pins in a little bit. It'll make a whole lot more sense soon enough, I promise. Oh, on edges where they're like open and you don't have any registration marks and you know it's just going to be like an open, it's just, you can be sloppy. Depends on how, how you are. I'm lazy as shit. Sometimes I'm, I'm not lazy though, but you'll see why. Ugh, everyone has their laziness and weak spots and all that stuff. Yeah, that O's Anything Goes ballad is pretty good. I like that one. Go ahead carefully do the curve. When you do curves, you just gotta keep moving. Don't stop. Do not stop. Don't stop for anything. Not even moving pins. Just keep going. Especially for curves. Uh, if you're doing big circles, I'm trying to make sure it's cut really good. When you get curves, you just wanna keep going because like, if you don't, you'll get some really jagged edges and it, it's more things you gotta clean. Um, if you got circles, you use like circular like presses. Sometimes you can get them and just dremel the inside or sand the inside and you'll get sharp. You just press and you're done. Um, so let's go ahead and pull that away. Now right here, let's take a look. Let's see what, how I did. Um, okay, not my best, but I've done worse. So I, I think this is passable. Okay, no. You can tell there's a slight angle on the foam, but it's it's well, kind of like really hard to tell unless you're like really looking for it. So this this should work pretty well. Uh, so like I said, if you have any foam that seems like it has a decent area size, keep it. If it looks like it doesn't have a great area size and you really don't need tiny scraps of foam, chuck them. Get rid of them. Any thin pieces like these, I would get rid of too. Unless you like really need some thin strips of foam, chuck them. Trash. Garbage. So now you're going to bust the Sharpie back out real quick. You're gonna go looking at each one of these marks. These are registration marks you made. And you can transfer them over to the other side. So we know this, this is the left side, so this is gonna be the right side. This is the front. And the back. 
and the top. All right, so let's start with the jaw parts because there's not too many on the jaw. Best way I like to do it, just go straight down. You know, have to be perfect, just close enough because, like I said, one side's gonna be like the real main idea, like what, what you know is gonna work. So you just do that. Then you come back over here where you see those lines. Just make it a little bit thicker. Just make sure they match up. That's all. Again, you gotta be careful when you use this method though, because if you use it this way, like I, I, I do not do this for new patterns or anything else. Like I just do this for patterns where I know they need to be symmetrical, as much symmetrical as possible. Sometimes you can screw it up and get a complete hardcore warp and it's purely because you made one wrong cut and, and you have to cut out the part again the other way and it's pain in the butt. So I don't usually recommend doing this, but for the base helmet, I think it's okay because you're gonna cover most of it anyways. These are designed to be layered. Layering is the process of taking other things and putting them on top of the other ones. So they're in layers. So, that's done. Keep the pins in, keep the pins in, keep the pins in. You are gonna take them apart for a little while. <sighs> but hey, two parts done. Technically, technically three, because we have this back part done. So I'm gonna set these over the side, I'm gonna cut out the middle next. All right, we're getting there. I'd say we're about a third of the way done. You got curves, just keep moving. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Do not let yourself stop. Move your whole body if you have to. Do not stop moving. Up. Ah! Up. Oh, okay, that might be a bad cut. I'll try pairing this cut real quick. I got a bad cut. I came out at a weird angle because I was moving my whole body. Don't want to move your whole body unless you absolutely have to. Okay, there. That cleaned it. So you can already tell the blade is already starting to get rough. So I'm going to switch it around here. That's a bad cut. That's a bad edge. That's going to need to get filled up with some contact cement. But that's okay. I was kind of hoping to fuck up a little bit so I can show you guys what you need to do in order to repair it. Quick seal. Quick seal, quick seal. We'll worry about that later. Let's make sure the rest of this came out okay. Yeah, the rest looked pretty good. It's only slight breaky. But I need to do. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, cool. Let me get the rest of it undone. Also, when you're done with your pins, put them back in your little pin board, or else you're going to be really annoyed by the fact you have like eight of them in your elbow, and you're like, why did I just leave them on the table? These are ones I would also chuck. There's like a little bit of space here, but not really so much on the rest of it, so eh. That's right, I was going to switch up, please. Yeah, this one's starting to go bad. This is looking pretty good. So this one look at Oh yeah, no, these look great. This this cuts this cut came out pretty good. That one's pretty even overall. Nice. Alright, so this one is one of those edges where I fudge it a little bit. There's a curve here, a little bit of one. And there's another one here, but there's a really hard edge there. So what you could do is just cut through and make that hard edge, but then I'll miss lose some of the definition and a registration mark right here. See, you can make angles to me registration marks. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting here, move back this way, and then start cutting here again and move back that way. So here, let me switch this around now. Probably be smart too. This is why also why I like these ones, is that I can swap them later around. Ah, I didn't cut all the way through. So be careful. That's one problem with the new blade is that sometimes you'll be like, oh, this cut's so smooth, it's so nice. Uh, you won't even realize that it actually did not finish cutting all the way through. <laughs> so be sure you cut all the way through. All right, leave these pinned together. Throw away the scrap, because this scrap is crap, and you don't need it. Everyone's got too much crap in their life. They only need that shit. I'm telling you, you feel a lot happier. All right, flip this over, mid R. Mid R. I think I got, I got mid L. Mid L. Mid R. So, north, mid L. South, mid R. <laughs>
if you're an aspiring artist and you have your own songs that you've written and you have no problem with somebody streaming them, please send them my way. I will definitely use them. I like using people's music. Instrumentals only, please. Um, don't get me wrong, I like pretty singing, but uh, I prefer instrumentals to work too. It's a little bit nicer, less, less voices to hear, because something with your brain where you hear voices you're trying to focus on. Even if you're listening to them in a different language, like your, your brain will be like, I need, I need to hear that. Why, why, why won't you let me hear that? So yeah, I'm going to add a couple more pins onto this one just because there's only three in there and it's going to be a pain in the ass to try to keep some of that together this way. Okay, okay. time to cut these out. Put your pins back in the pin board when you're done, unless you're keeping them in the parts. Always keep them in the parts if you're doing this layering method. Cannot stress that enough. It's super important. Ooh, cutting it close there on the edge, you gotta be careful. Alright, so I had to like, kind of tug on that one. I'm really hoping that this cut all the way through, because if it didn't, I, oh, yeah, this is going to be a pain. Oh. You ever start to feel like you're struggling with cutting your foam? It may be time for you to go sharpen a blade or go get a new one. You will eat through these things, man. I'm telling you, go get yourself a blade sharpener if you haven't already. I have one, I just did not bring it in. Didn't really see any a point to, because I rarely go through more than two or three blades in one working session. I'm gonna say one working session is like two or three hours uh, of foam cutting. Um, I'm also using a, a new type of blade. Usually, you use Stanley's, and Stanley's the best. You can't go wrong. I recommend those 50 or 60 to 100 packs because um, you just pull it out. Your two sides are done. Pulling out two sides are done. Pulling out two sides are done. You can drop them in the container. You can sharpen them again later. Put them back in the bottom of the container. They're the best. I love them. All right, folks. We are getting near the end. We only have two more parts to do after a. Get these lines marked up. We're gonna glue these parts here in a second. We're actually gonna put the glue down, then we're gonna pull out the pins and we're gonna separate the parts and lay them out so they can dry while I get to work on the jaw. Because like I said, contact cement, they take anywhere from, it takes anywhere from five to 10 minutes for the glue to get to a nice tact where it'll hold itself really well. Oh yeah, a bit of oil definitely helps with uh, sharpening the blades. What's the name? What's the Sentai song? Oh, it's Mask Man! It's Mask Man! Sorry, sorry. Just having a token moment. All right, so these two parts right here, keep them pinned together, but these two parts are actually gonna connect to each other. They're gonna connect on this edge right here. So this edge is gonna connect to this edge. Cool, eh? That's why I always say it's very important to label your edges. See how I did the front here, and that's front over there, and then back over here, and then back over here. Label your edges, put down your registration marks. It will help, it always helps. All right, glue, contact cement. This is, this is, Ooh, I love this stuff. All right. So what you're gonna do is one simple layer. Just make sure you cover well enough to where it's got a decent thickness on there. You can tell there's enough on there, all right? So, be careful doing this too. You don't wanna get all over your fingers, but it's inevitable. You're, you're gonna get it all over your fingers. Wear gloves. Do as I say, not as I do. Let's put this in the spot where you can see what we're doing. This stuff's actually pretty thick, so it should be okay to just do one layer. Like I said, I, I like to mix mine with the gel. 
Uh, it makes it a little bit thicker, a little bit more viscous. Lays out a lot smoother. I like it. You can also use a, a scrap piece of foam to spread uh, and clean up some of these pieces. I might do that here in a sec because there's a lot of uh, hangover parts. Don't want to put too much on your brush, because if you put too much on your brush, you're going to get overspill, which is going to happen on the edges. It happens regardless of how much you really have on there. Uh, and that's actually not a bad thing either. It's always okay to have like a little bit on the edges of the foam, like on the, on the top parts of the surfaces, like here, uh, just for better seals and whatnot. But uh, I like to clean them up a little bit, because if they get too globby, that means that it'll sleep into the holes a little bit more and make, make things just more difficult to use and, and it'll take it longer to dry and it's, it's yeah, more trouble than it's worth. So, you can kind of see I have some globby bits of foam or uh, the glue sitting around. So what I'm going to do is zoom in so you guys get a better idea. See how there's some on the edge like right here? I'll take this foam piece right here and I'm going to scrape that up. Just like that. See? Cool. So I'm going to do that real quick on all these edges and just make sure you don't have too much built up residue. I spread it as much as I can on just the edge to get it out because, like I said, I don't want it to build up and get gunky. So it'll just it'll cause more problems than it's worth. Okay, you want to be quick about this too, though, because here I have been jammer jawing this whole time, and now the glue is starting to dry a little bit, and I don't want to have too much of this blobbed on because it's going to be more work later on to clean up. All right, cool. That's all done. So now, you're gonna take the pins out, you're gonna lay these out on your plastic. We'll try to lay them as flat as possible on your plastic, okay? So pull out your pins. And as they dry, I'm gonna pull them off. And uh, put them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making the job piece. Oh, I gotta hurry up because my camera doesn't have very much power left. Either that or get it plugged in somehow. I don't know how though. I don't have very many plugs around here. Oh wait, do I have a USB inside my laptop? I do! Ooh, 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 ooh. Living in the future is fun, y'all, let me tell you. Back in my day, we had one USB port and we enjoyed it! We would put our mice in it, and then we'd have room for two mice! That's the day, back when I had Windows 95. Mmm, Chex Quest. Only the best Doom clone. That's not a debate. You're not going to argue me on that. Chex Quest is the best. Solely being that it was cheap, and it, it's amazing. It's, it's so good. Chex Quest, oh my god, play that game. Go download it, it's free. Should be by now. That's a fun show. Is it bad I want like a Go Kaiju 2? Just want to catch up with everybody and just have them transform into all the new guys. I know we just had that with Zooager, but can we do it again? Please? Toy? Toy, please? Kaizu Sentai Go Kaiju. A sign of a true weeaboo, singing only the words that you know in Japanese and English, and then just humming the rest. Like I said, always wear gloves when you do this. I'm being stupid, and I'm not, so you, you totally should, though. Don't be stupid like me. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to do the tracing of the job it. And I'm going to do a really simple version of it, but I'm also going to explain to you uh, the angle cuts a little bit. So just for the sake of getting it done, I'm just going to lay it out there as quickly as I can. So 
So there's a couple of reasons why I drew these lines right here. Just to show a couple things. Um, I like to cut these out. I like to cut out these things in like little V shapes so that they come out and there's more of an angle. But because I'm just trying to get this done quickly because I only have a couple minutes of battery left, um, we are just going to cut this out and we're going to do a very simple, simple, regular 90 degree angle cuts. You can cut these at a 45 degree angle cutting in like that on the inside and then it'll give everything points or, or hard angles. So you can even do a V-shape indentation cut that doesn't go all the way through just enough to where you peel out that foam, glue those edges together and you can have a hard edge jaw on the side of the helmet. Um, but we're going to go for a smooth rounded out one so we're just going to go ahead and cut this part out. Cool. So usually, like I said, I would cut these out. You can always use these as guides of where you want to fold your foam a little bit to make your construction a little bit easier, especially when you get the glue parts together. And that's the great thing about foam too is that it's it's durable. It can take a lot. It can stretch. It can be pulled. It can be pressed. You could you could make this work for you. Okay. So now I'm gonna glue all these parts really quick. I'm gonna put this over there, and then we're gonna get started on gluing those other parts together that we set down earlier. Okay. Pins are done. I don't need any more pins. I'll put those away. Put the trash away. All right, now. It's time to pull these pieces back over here and let this one dry over there. So now we're getting into actually putting the whole thing together. Everything's been glued, everything has been dried long enough to where we can start putting this bitch together. So, I like to start at the back. Oh god, no, 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 okay, that would have been a problem. Don't let these pieces touch each other, because they will connect. They, they, they touch on contact, aka contact cement. So, I'm going to get these two edges as close as I can to each other and try and line up the top surface of the foam as close as I can with each other as well. All right, and that looks good. And then we're just gonna keep rolling and pressing slowly until these two marks line up. There we go, registration marks right there in work. Just keep pressing slowly. Now I'm gonna curve this actually in towards me because it'll, it'll be easy to roll backwards and out in a minute. Okay, we're almost done. See how the registration marks are working already? You can already see there's a curvature being made by just, just trying to get these pieces to, to touch each other right in those marks. Now every once in a while I like to go back and I like to do like a like a like a press to, press and twist motion like that with two pieces of foam in my hand. Because if you look really closely, um, see how they aren't really connecting too great right there? If you do a grab, a press and twist on either side, if you did that correctly, see? They bonded! So now you just gotta do that on either side, all the way up and down. Just keep doing that, do it like halfway through. Halfway through when you're done with each part, just, just to make sure that they are attaching, okay? Uh, you will have popping if you didn't put down enough glue, and that's okay, popping's not a problem, because you just put down some more glue and you just press it back in. And then if, if it's still popping and you can't fill that hole with just taking more glue and putting two pieces together, Con or, uh, quick seal, quick seal, or wood filler, or, or, or spot putty, uh, Bondo automotive filler. If you want to be that extra, um, you, 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 could, you could get it filled up. It's not a big deal. The other thing too about prop making you learn is that nothing's really a mistake. It's it's just more work. So it all comes down to what extra steps are you willing to take to not have to do more work. So, something tells me that this right here may pop when curving is back, we'll see. Alright. 
almost done with this first part. And like I said, you want to try to get to where these faces are as perfectly smooth as you can meeting with each other, just because um, if you don't, it could either warp the piece or make it to where it doesn't seal correctly, or it'll just make it look kind of ugly, and you'll have to do more work on finishing the seams. Because, like, that's the other thing with EVA, it's like, if you work hard enough, you can make it to where you can't even tell there's a seam at all. If you don't work at all, you can totally tell there's a seam. So, so totally do the seam work. Fix it up if you can. So I just flipped it inside out. And you can tell that's the top of the helmet. We got a really nice curvature for the top of this bucket. Side view of that. Okay. So we're gonna set this over to the side. And I'm gonna grab mid L. And we're gonna go start working on it this way. Foam can really stretch and pull too, so like don't be afraid to take it and really wiggle it your way to get it to fit. Like I had to attach it here and then pull back for it to meet that first registration mark. Don't be afraid of that. that that's totally fine. That'll help give you the shape you need. See, this is another example right here. See, see how these registration marks are slightly, slightly off from each other? I'm just gonna push the foam into the other one until they meet. Just like that. See? Just like that. Context to make it be a little bit forgiving too, like, it, depending on how strong a bond you just put together, you should be able to pull these parts apart if you need to, to re-attach them in case they came in slightly uncentered. Uh, see, look, 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 you can probably see me do it right here. See how this little edge is, like, slightly up above the other one? I'm going to pull it out. See, so you just pull it out, and then you just reattach where it connects. Oop, long, long ago, 20th century, Common Art of Black's ending theme. Oh god, it's not the instrumental. Oh shit. Oh god, no. Karatha song, please. Sing better. Sometimes it's nice to just run your finger back on it going the opposite direction so the bottom ends will really adhere to each other. Alright, cool. So let's get this other side on real fast. Okay, so now this is where it starts to get a little bit more difficult because you're starting to add more and more parts to this this whole big thing and it's it's going to be harder to attach some of these pieces together because you, you have less working space because you're worried about bending and shaping all these other parts. Almost done. All right. So now we have this whole top part and top of the front part of the helmet done. So next, we're going to get the back part, we're going to attach the back onto this, and then we're going to do the two sides, and then the jaw last. So let's go ahead and get this back piece on here. Come on, get it on there. This is another instance of denser foam not working great against the softer foam. You can totally tell it's trying to stay flat. So, just, just futz with it, stretch it a little bit, and it'll get there. See? It's already, it's already looking a little bit better just from doing that. This stuff's more rigid, but doesn't mean it can't still stretch the same way that this stuff can. It just takes more work. So, there, that edge is on there now. It's on the back. I think it looks, looks alright. Cool. So now, let's get the left and right side attached. Go back to front when you do this one, okay? So I like to start in this corner right here. Oh, psh, balls. Get out of here. All right.
And we're gonna get the next side done, and then add on the jaw, and then this will be done. It would only taken us about two hours. And that's because I was sitting here talking through half of it. And having to make sure I'm like on camera and stuff. Like if I didn't have to worry about any of this, I swear we'd get this done in like an hour or less. So there's there's half of it. We're we're getting there. This is starting to look awful helmet like. After we attach this part, we're like one more part. So we're two more parts away. Next part's actually a more intricate part though, so we'll get there last. Alright. We have a half helmet. This is the half helmet. So, uh, as of right now, the helmet's done! Uh, it, it could use a little bit of heat work to help uh, round it out a little bit. You can tell it's a little bit flat on the sides. But that's just because it, it was a flat piece of foam. And there you have it. You have your very own base helmet. Now, uh, I would recommend just cutting this thing up, I recommend taking tape to it so you can add on other designs, pull off the tape, lay it out flat on paper, and then transfer that over to, to foam, and then you can add stuff onto it. Carving stuff out of it's a little bit of a challenge too. But the great thing about that pattern I gave you is, is that you can print it back out, you can do it just as paper with cardstock, and you can redesign it from there, cut it apart, change it up, make it different, make it yours. That's what I want to see, and this is the whole reason why I started sharing my patterns and sharing how I do my stuff, is that I, I want to see more people like you making stuff. So, if you use this pattern right here, which you can download in the link down below, go download it, it's free. Usually I make people pay for this, so the fact you're getting it for free is really, really cool. Uh, if you make something out of this helmet, tweet at me, let me know. Use, use uh, uh, tweet, tweet at me at the next decade, or use the hashtag uh, TND. I, I check hashtag TND all the time, even though nobody uses it except for random stock market people, and I want to screw with them really bad. So, uh, hope you enjoyed making your own base helmet. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got some other crafting to do! Later! Oh god! Hey, thanks for watching the whole video. I really do appreciate it. If you like my work and you want to see more of it, you can check me out over on Instagram and on Twitter at The Next Decade. You can also find me over on Facebook at The Next Decade Props and Costumes. And if you want to support me, support me on Patreon. Two dollars a month can get you two simple patterns like this base helmet pattern. If you do $5 or more, you can get 3 to 4 patterns every month. And if you do $10 or more, you can get anywhere from 4 to 5 patterns every month that are a little bit crazier, a little bit more intricate, or maybe even whole full costume packs. I know I did release back in February and March the Kamen Rider O's pack, so if you want to jump on it before I release the Kamen Rider Double Pack before the end of the night, hey, now's the time to jump on. Thank you again, I thoroughly appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments, what do you want to see next as far as me building stuff? What do you want help with when it comes to making props and costumes? I'd be more than willing to help you out. Take care. Hey. Yeah. Still there? Cool. Here's a blooper. Just click one of those videos above, and then you can see the blooper. Promise.